This is amongst the reasons why I don't like Eternabon, or this tape sealant. It doesn't allow for movement, and so it rips. It doesn't stick. And now with this open right here, it's a nice channel to get underneath everything you're trying to seal. So Eternabon is a temporary fix, and it's an expensive temporary fix. I wouldn't recommend ever using it. I mean, not only did it rip right here because of the movement of the uh, front cap, it's not sticking right here. Then it hides the problem underneath. Weird, isn't it? You'd think duct tape would do better than this because that's all that a turnabon is. All these roof tapes are is just duct tape. Makes a big mess. It's difficult to clean up, and uh, you know, it's just it's so expensive. So all I'm going to do is uh, peel up this Eternabon, clean it all up, take this molding off, re-secure this front roof actually, to it's, so it's actually secured and not flexing, and put the, the molding back on, use a heck of a lot more screws. So you can see I already got this part of the tape off, and uh, this is going to be a lot of work. And also it's really hot. At any rate, this is just the overview of the roof here. It's definitely got problems. That's why we were trying to fix it. Luckily, this heat allows, uh, I guess, the adhesive to be a lot softer. But it's definitely still a lot of work. So, it's hard with one hand. So this stuff's always difficult to work with, makes a big mess. You can see these rivets that are supposed to be holding the roof down, just have popped out. That one doesn't even exist. These screws are all backed out. All this was conveniently hidden by that Eternabon. So, don't use Eternabon. Stop it. Okay, so here it is. All the screws are out of the trim. Hopefully, i just pull this up. Oh, there's still one more in here somewhere. So that's where it was. Just had to dig that way. Okay. Here we go. Get that trim off of there now. There you can see. How the uh, roof looks, how much dirt was getting in there. Quite a bit. And all the gummy mess that a turtle bottom left. So, it's easy to see water was getting in right there really easily. Now I have to clean all this up. Thanks, a turtle bottom. All right, I'm just using this uh, razor scraper. Be careful with these. These are really nice, but uh, obviously it's a razor blade, so using that to take the gummy layer off. I got the rivets and everything drilled out so that the razor blade's not catching that edge. So it's just gonna be a lot of this. Okay, so I was holding this roof material on before with rivets. So what I'm gonna do is uh, double up the holes. So in between each rivet hole, I'll drill a hole, and then next to the rivet hole, I'll drill a hole, and I'll be screwing this down the whole way. So basically, I will just randomly choose a spot right about there. And drill through uh, the roof. Repeat that all the way down. The roof is uh, actual fiberglass gel coat with a Luon substrate. It looks like this roof is actually just uh, getting secured to the fiberglass front cap. So I'm not going to tear this whole thing apart and try to redesign everything. I'm just trying to secure it down and seal it. You can see all the holes I've drilled, and I'm going to put screws in it now. All right, I'll just be using these uh, lath screws. I like them because they're wash head. They spread out the uh, the pressure a little bit on their self tapper, so I'm just gonna be putting these in. See if that one's in. It came down pretty well and started oozing out the butyl. Alright, again, a whole bunch of screws. Continue on. 
All right, so here it is, all the uh, screws put in. I wrapped it all the way around. Secured pretty well. You can kind of see the uh, butyl oozed out where I secured it. So, clean it up one more time. I'll clean up the molding. And then I'm drilling twice as many holes in the molding and putting the screws in. At any rate, these were the screws that came out of the front cap. So they're the same length, if not a little bit longer than the ones I'm putting in. So we should be good. Okay, well the plan on this is uh, I cleaned up this molding pretty much as much as I wanted to. Uh, there's a lip on the side of the molding there. I'm going to be placing it where the uh, roof transitions to the uh, front cap so it steps down. So it'll be right about... Ow! Right about... There is where it's going to go. So I'll use new holes too. Like I said, then I'll drill in between each one of these holes for more screws. And these are my screws I'm using. All right. All right, so this is just a temporary setup. I've got all the screws put in. You can kind of see where it used to be. It was right here. In fact, you can see right there's where the old screw hole would have been. So I've pulled this back to offset so that the uh, screws that are holding this roof down are covered by something now. Even right here, you can kind of see where the rivet is, and that's even pulled back from where it was originally. So now I'm going to drill those holes and pre-drill. Then I'll pull this all back up again after I mark it, seal it, put it back down, and be good for now. Screwed down and drilled. And make sure when you're drilling these holes, you drill through the fiberglass roof too, because you don't want the threads to grab under the roof. You would just want to grab underneath the roof. So I'm just going to mark, make a line right here, and make a mark right here so I know pretty much where to put sealant and where everything lines back up again all right okay okay so i'm just gonna be using a dicor lap sealant underneath here rather than trying to put butyl tape under here because uh basically it's gonna do the exact same thing just fill the void uh, the the die core at least ooze and fill up all these holes and uh, it's actually a good base No matter what some people might think Okay, so there's a die core just kind of gooped on I'll just put the uh, trim on top and it'll ooze everything out and I can screw it That's also why I put all my marks so I could see them because I knew uh, this would hide a lot of it All right Look at that. With butyl, you never know if it fills all the gaps underneath, but with this method, you know if it fills the gaps underneath. So, all the screws are in, all the sealants are oozing out, and the sealant also acts as an adhesive when it cures. So I just have to uh, seal both sides of this rail and each screw top. Uh, fill this void underneath the satellite dish right there. And once this stuff sets up, because this self-leveling, I can't go over the radius right here, I'll clean up whatever excess falls down. And then I'll just seal it with some clear silicone. Here's uh, basically what it's going to look like when it's finished. I did half of it. Just a bead on either side and over the screw cap. And then right here, that valley, I just filled it up. Uh, the lap sealant on top, remember, is just a secondary seal. It's really not the primary seal. It was the seal underneath that's actually the seal. The lap seal on top is really just to uh, persuade water and moisture to go somewhere else to follow a different path. So, if this stuff's cracking or stuff's peeling up, uh, putting more Dicor on top isn't really solving any problem. It's just wasting uh, money. You need to secure everything first. Well, all right, well, there's the uh, six foot view of it. Should be a lot better than it was. Like I said, I still have to uh, seal the the radius edges and clean that all up. But I'm gonna wait for that so it doesn't turn into a sticky marshmallow mess. And uh, I'd already done the rear one, so same thing over here, just just as much work. All right.